Today I would like to share four of my experiences that I had personally when it came to stealing Lego. The earliest memory, one of four that I have when it comes to stealing the brick, was at my local library. Looking back on it now, I now realize that it was pretty sick. So sick, in fact, it had several containers of Lego in the kids' play area. And in this bin of dated bricks, there are quite a few things that caught my eye that I knew I didn't have back at home. Now, when taking part of the great scam of the early 2000s, I was no older than five years old, but I had a mission. I'm here to do my due diligence and perform community service on telling you exactly how and breaking down my methods and the ways of going about the art of the theft. But before we get into it, I want you to remember the do's and don'ts of theft. Don't steal, and if you're gonna steal, do not steal. And now that we have that out of the way, here we have a perfect rendition of what my local library, at least part of it, looked like that I grew up going to. As you can see by the clearly defined entries and exits, we had to come in through one of these two doors. Well, it didn't really matter, but since we probably drove to the library, we came in through this door, and we had to make it past the front desk security right here. Now, security would be tight, but seeing since I was a literal child, it was quite a breeze. All we had to do now is take one of the mini routes around some of the bookcases, around some of the computer desks, or we could just go straight through and hit to the carpet that was the play area. Once here, we just had to pull out some of the bins and boxes of Lego, grab our identified piece, and boogie on out through the way we came. Without getting caught, of course, with the security guards that were located here, there were also some around the computer at any point, and oftentimes there'd be some back in here helping individual guests. So we had to be very careful. Also, there's a fish tank here. Not much about it, but uh, there, there was a fish tank. Now the first heist I ever pulled off from this library was a set of epaulets. Why I wanted this, I have no idea. What I would do with this, I have no idea. Do I still have it? Yes, I do. Now I wasn't just set on taking the epaulets back at home base and calling it a day. No, no, no. I needed to cover my tracks. Even though my parents had no idea the extent of the brick that was back at home and what individual parts were in there, what if they did? What if on the off chance they found out and they started questioning things? That's where my older brother came in. I acquired most of my Lego from him. And if anyone were to have some random part show up, it would be him, would it not? All I ended up doing was telling him, hey, I found this cool piece under your bed. Can I have it? I'll give you a dollar for it. And it worked like a charm. I don't know if he knew to this day if that piece actually came from under his bed or Maybe he didn't care and he just wanted a dollar. He was getting a good deal. I was overpaying on something. We both knew that, but I was happy doing it because I had someone to throw under the bus. I did pull off this heist at least one more time with a small tree mold where I did the same process again. Found it under my brother's bed, paid him off, and called it a day. I can't recall if I did it another time after this, but I'm gonna assume not seeing since a dollar is a pretty high bounty and I probably only had $2. Unfortunately, the stealing streak wouldn't stop with the local library. I had a bigger target in mind, the Lego store. With the high traffic of the Disney Springs store in Orlando, this was going to be my next target. With so many people, kids and adults alike, it'd be too easy, and that BAM tower was calling my name. The Orlando store has a unique circle design that makes trafficking illegal Lego very difficult. There are multiple entries and exits, but because of the circle design, two sets of eyes can scan the entire area all by themselves. And with three separate checkout areas, we have eyes looking in every single direction at the BAM towers all right here in the middle of the store. My recommendation is to come through the exit closest to the parking right here and then walk around one of the many various display cases. Once you do a, a good old 360 around the store, taking a look at everything, feeling up the pad wall, the good old stuff, you come to the middle section where there's a bunch of activities going on. Now because we have eyes everywhere and we have a constant flow of traffic come, of employees coming from up here, it's kind of hard to pass through it. But if you bring in your aunt with one of the prime Lego bags, she can just bump in to one of the towers right here, right here, or maybe right here, and parts will fall right into it. Once you're there, you can either go off the exit you came if you want to make a fast getaway, not knowing that you actually had partook in the theft, or just continue to go on to go to the crap Disney parks, or go off this way and eat uh, crappy dinosaur nuggets at the dinosaur place. It would be a long time before I paid to get mini figs out of that tower, but for the first time, it was all too free. With the help of my aunt accidentally brushing in the tower because she was trying to sidestep some kids, some pieces fell into her bag. And was this attended? Absolutely not. But did we return it? Absolutely not. So you are now looking at the proud owner of one visor, two swords, and a stick. However, my aunt taught me the lustful ways of the theft, so I went back to her house and took bricks from her son. Now when you're performing a heist at my aunt's house, 
the things are going to be quite difficult if you're not me or someone directly related to me. But if you are perhaps related and you have a direct access, here are the blueprints to how you can get away with the easy pickings. Going right through the front door, pretty simple. But if you want a real challenge, you could go through the back side door of the, the through the yard and go all the way around to the, the back of the house where you can get in through the back door and then right here is an easy access to my cousin's bedroom where you just throw like a, a rock through the front window right there and make it right through. But I feel as if that one might be a little bit loud and not as incognito as say, going through the front door. Once you're in the back bedroom, all you have to do is grab that Captain Jack Sparrow and you're all set. My own flesh and blood I stole from, that's a real weasel move. Honestly, actually, you probably really should never steal from family. That's one of the last people if you're gonna steal, which, yeah, I know that's up to you, but if you're going to, you really shouldn't take from your family. That is terrible and uh, I did. Because of my terrible actions I took that day, I still have a Captain Jack Sparrow voodoo doll minifigure that I keep with other minifigures that represent something to me. Now it's a reminder of the good times I had with my cousin when I was younger before he became kind of a jerk to me and vice versa. But it was still pretty messed up. You really shouldn't take from your family. That wouldn't be the last time my greed overgrew my consciousness and I struck again. It was Kids Fest 2013, Louisville, Kentucky, and I was on a mission to go play with a bunch of Lego sets because my parents were super wonderful and took my younger brother and I to a Lego convention and it was freaking sweet. Oh my God, they had life-size hobbits made out of Lego and Lightning McQueen, but that excitement didn't distract me from my one true purpose, finding a really cool Lego piece and taking it back with me. Was this the intended target? Absolutely yes. Wait. All right, Kids Fest is gonna be a little bit more tricky. It's not a normal Lego store or my aunt's house. This one, this is the big leagues. At the Louisville, Kentucky Kids Fest in 2013, there were a good number of booths spread out everywhere and a lot of prying eyes, both of workers and other guests. And if you aren't careful at any point, anyone at any number of these booths will have your butt detained at the Lost Kid counter in no time. Coming through the main entrance here, you see that there are multiple routes, but there was a general flow to go through here up and around throughout the entire the complex. The construction zone is what we're wanting to hit. That means we have to make through all of these just to get there. And the time you're there, you'll probably get distracted along the way with the legitimate free Lego that they were just passing out. Which, thinking about it now, why would someone want to grab one individual piece when they were just passing out potentially hundreds of dollars worth of free Lego sets if you had enough people there? Maybe let's not dwell on that. Once we've made it to the spot, again, and the 2013 Louisville, Kentucky, uh, Kids Fest, that's almost a decade past now, you can get the conveyor belt piece. But all those cool brick built statues did not stop me. You think that mound of bricks I could literally swim through was gonna distract me from my prize? Uh, yes, because I wasn't planning on going to take anything, but they had this really cool conveyor belt piece that I saw there. I was like, wow, I've never seen this before. This is so cool. Should I have known better? Yes. D did I take it? Yes.